Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast weekly show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Rise of the Tomb Raider has been released for Linux, but unfortunately, it's just, just a wee bit feral. And NVIDIA drama, we're going to talk about it. We're going to discuss it civilly, kind of. Not really. Serious Sam, go, Serious Sam goes green, just in time for 420. And flip it's got the money, but you gotta whine for it first. Steam cracks down on cybering groups. Well, will the I, yeah, he, where wow. will the furries migrate to next? And someone takes a crack at a proper Switch Pro controller support. And well, I say proper. It, it seems to avoid SDL two at all costs. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, man, see, I'm messing up scenes too. Um, I'm Vin Stone, old man <laughs> Vin, rightfully called. I'm here at LGC Actual, switching the bits, uh, putting put it out live. All. All powered by Linux and all ends. Joined every week uh, by the man who's uh, watching snow melt in Kanakistan. That's, that's one master spec. Oh, I'm 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 melting too. Listen, listen, Vin, you gotta you gotta lay out lay off the uh, propylene glycol. Your brain has just turned into a giant fog cloud. Uh, I hate to break it to you, sweetheart, but you guys cocked up far more severely than I have so far. Uh, <laughs> speaking of cocking up severely, that that dulcet <laughs> laughter is Pedro Hello. Mateus on the island and joining us live. Every Saturday night, Shot Realm Dynamic, the worst of the worst. The, um, what, what would you call him? The, um, the, the fairest of the fairest. Upper echelon of high functioning sociopaths. Because together with their uh, help, uh, we form Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started in each other, uh, God, Messi, it's infecting me. Fuck both of you. <laughs> Die in fire. <laughs> It's the brain worms. You uh, can't escape. <laughs> there, there will be no salvation. We do like to see what's going on in each other's life organs, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I've got a whole lot going on, man. I watch Pacific Rim too. I uh, kind of wish I didn't. It's like Ender's Rim or uh, GoBots. <laughs> if GoBots had a movie, it would be kind of like that. A little disappointed. Jordan, what's up? I'm pretty sure Orson Scott Card would be very, very upset by Ender's Rim, but I'm just going <laughs> to leave that one there. Um, yeah, no, I started a new job this week, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'm I'm dealing with Windows 10. I'm trying. I'm doing an experiment. I'm going to see how much I can just exist within the Windows 10, 10 Linux subsystem mm -hmm. and not have to deal with anything Windows after like the first week. So far, it's going all right. It's still flaming hot right. garbage. Don't use Windows, guys. <laughs> it sucks. <laughs> Linux has spoiled me. Things just work out of the box. This is therapy. This is what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. uh, just get, uh, let let it I, out. I, let I, it I, out. Th this is a safe space. <laughs> this is a safe space. Right. Bad touch. Pedro, what's up, man? Yeah. Well, uh, much like Jordan Network, we are moving. Uh, we're, we're starting to move people to Windows 10. We're starting with the tech savvy people. It's like, yeah, you know how to google things so you let us know if you run into an actual issue not just user error because there's a lot of user error going on in that office just saying <laughs> but yeah it's uh it's windows 10 it's i guess it was inevitable I, uh, I, it's the nhs still being on windows 10 is uh all right considering what, what patch uh, level what are they on did. by the way <laughs> <laughs> oh man hey yeah. listen there's one thing that belongs at the nhs and it's the horse because that the fuck is all up on some life support no dude there's no bringing it back that thing is so dead david cameron's giving it some eyes it's the steam linux update of of the the week. Week. speaking of steamy stuff uh that's oh, not allowed anymore who he is what oh man no a little bit maybe i don't know <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Steam is uh, clamping down on uh, not safe for work groups, and this comes from a little Reddit post uh, from someone who totally doesn't frequent those groups, you guys. He just goes there every now and then because reasons. Uh, and Listen, he's talking, every, he's everyone like, oh, jacks yeah. off to weird shit on the internet. It's nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, he actually says it's odd because, you know... Uh, well, it's not. Uh, he says it's not odd because Valve has actually been clamping on um, hate groups previously, and we've seen a lot of that lately. It's like people, hmm, Nazis and whatnot, just go to Steam because, hey, it's not moderated, so we can do anything we want. Well, Valve's gone new. But 
in doing so, they also went to like the weird uh, erotic role play groups that may or may not involve uh, furry costumes, and basically put the uh, kibosh on those too. I, I don't. I don't See, know. Like the, 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 so this is this is a Reddit post link to it's on our show notes and there's some interesting theories mm-hmm. going on about this. There's like some Basta Sesta legislation that was passed in the United States to like stop mm. child trafficking. So there's some there's some theories that this might be some preemptive like yeah we don't we don't want uh, the U.S. government knock sniffing around our forums because we don't moderate them and we don't want to <laughs> we don't want to be guilty of anything. Um and of, and of course like it's always these niche groups that suffer and I mean if. If it's just like straight up furry erotic role play, then it's well, it's harmless, mm-hmm. right? And these guys are gonna have to relocate, and that's that's gonna that community, moving communities around is very difficult because you just lose a bunch of people. I don't think Valve's gonna actually do anything about this until like there, there's like, oh well, you've targeted some GLBT group now, and now you're fucking discriminating against people. Then it gets no blown up. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a sticky wicket. I, I love the first comment on this yeah. article. I mean, it's Steam is clamping down on NSFW groups. First comment, Steam are clamping down hard, and the BDSM groups are loving it. That... <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Couldn't have put it better myself. All right, that's the thing. Um, Steam has a command line, but somebody wants to make it just that much simpler. Yes. So you may know about Steam CMD. It's, it's been around for a while, and it's uh, really useful if you just want to get the data from your Windows games to run, say, an open source re-implementation. This, on the other hand, is Steam CLI. It's available on GitHub, uh, and you need Steam CMD, Bash, obviously, JQ, and Wine, optional. Uh, it's optional because, yes, you can uh, use Steam CLI to download and install Wine games directly from Steam CMD. And it it needs uh, proper integration into something like, I don't know, Lutris <laughs> before it'll be useful. But there is, a, I guess, in their attempt to make this as simple as possible to just get your games, get them installed, get them running any way your computer can. If you need Wine to play a Windows-only game, then, well, you're going to need it. Uh, and it's... I think it's a really good idea. It just needs to be integrated into tools that already exist that do similar stuff. I, I mean, like, <laughs> looking, looking at the syntax here, it's really trying to be, like, after Yum or Zipper or Emerge or Portage or Pac-Man or Mm-hmm. What, what, whatever else um it, just 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 based on like the steam cmd steam cli install steam cli update whatever i mean if you're if you're that obsessed with running shit through the terminal that you're you're you, you if, you're, if you're so constrained on system resources that just launching the game itself eats up all your ram i don't i don't, I don't know what to tell you brad Hey man, maybe this will be featured. Uh, you know, next time they're hacking the firewalls in NCIS, they'll be using um, Steam Command or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't really use that. I mean, if you do need this, you're wondering why would you ever use those in the first place? This is crazy talk. I, if you need resource files for, say, you have a open source engine reimplementation, let's say you just need the data files. Mm-hmm. Good way to yoink it. That's really the only practical thing I can think. If the game's not available on GOG, like if you want to play uh, yeah. Doom, <laughs> Doom Three. Or- or uh, OpenMW, yeah, is the is, mm-hmm. is a big example. That's a good thing, and it is there. Uh, game updates, the Ark, yeah. man, no Noah though. Arch, right? Arch, no, not Noah's Ark. So uh, this is could, this comes from one of those threads, you know, the ones we're talking about. Oh, can we please have a Linux release? And the dev said, "Hey, Mister Doom guy, yes, we are planning to release the game for Linux as well, and the game is Insomnia: colon, The Ark." And, uh, well, if I was going to, uh, say, plagiarize one of Yahtzee's things, it's Insomnia, <gasps> the Ark. Ow. And... <laughs> Le gas. Uh, it's a, um... They describe it as a complex, story-driven RPG that takes place on a colossal space metropolis. And I was looking at the, um, the actual gameplay bits of the trailer. It's like, oh, oh, that's like a more modern, uh enclave type thing with a you know sci-fi setting i'm totally down for that i can't wipe the drool off my keyboard fast enough i'm totally down for that 
I'm not sure that's true. Um, I mean, I mean, so 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 that so they say uh, it's coming. Uh, I'm not. Sure. This could be a UE4. It could be Unity Five. I can't quite tell from it, the screenshots because they're. It looks Unreal Engine Four. Yeah, it's a lot, lot, there's lots of dark going on, which uh, had stuff. Any and any a lot of particle um, effects and shininess and mm. bloom. And, in, yeah. in, 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 indeed. <laughs> but, so they say it's coming. All we can do is take them at their word. They might. It would. It would be nice. We 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 could use more like yeah. nice looking RPGs on Linux. That you know are fun. Well, but stay tuned. To the acquisition. Hey man, I, I enjoy living in this moon future where you see something like this because over the years, like oh, we'll never get anything like that. That looks too fun. And for the developer, you know, the tools are there, the engines are there, and it's getting easier and easier not only to get your stuff over to Linux, but to be able to provide support for it. And mm -hmm. it's good to see stuff with the developers like, yeah, I think we're going to make a Linux build. So. One thing I'm really glad mm -hmm. that got a Linux build is Hollow Knight, a game I think we all love. Old school, mm -hmm. fuck you hard platformer, but it's so pretty, you don't mind that it didn't bring any lube. It's got an update, <laughs> that's right, it's here, and it's the Lifeblood update. A couple of new things, brand new boss, uh, one boss completely upgraded, uh, and they say a true challenge awaits. That, uh, that's like icing on the because fuck you, that's why hard. <laughs> uh, custom map markers. Those are great because this game's big, man. It is Metroidvania times six. And um, some new extras in the menu is now playable in Japanese. Apparently that was needed. I think optimization, performance enhancements. Uh, kind of curious on that because even as a Unity title, we do tend to hold this game up as if you want proof that you can have wicked tight, precise controls in a Unity title mm -hmm. with a gamepad. Hollow Knight brings it. If you've been in the beta, you've already experienced this. This is not new to you, but if you haven't been in the beta branch, here it is. Go back, revisit it. It's a beautiful game, and more is better. And this is from Team Cherry, so this clock's in at the low, low price of free, man. They just keep on throwing out some yeah, no, great content. Yeah. It, it's, it's one of those things, too, where... Um, you're just getting a really good return on investment, even if you're like super late to the game. Like, oh, what's this Hollow Knight thing? Oh, as it turns out, I get like free 200 hours of content. Mm -hmm. Cause fuck you, that's why. Mm -hmm. Like, here's the thing. I keep on sucking off Hollow Knight real quick. Is I go through a game to beat it. I, I am not a collector. I am not a completionist. And powering through Hollow Knight, I'm at like 53 hours. That's <laughs> powering through it, man. So. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah they're, they there's say, so much content. Yeah, and they're not done because they say that the uh, Gods and Glory, the free content pack three, is still coming. So, uh, yeah, they're not done. Hmm. It's good. That's very good. <laughs> well, it, it's nice that we were able to talk about something good. Let's talk about something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe good wouldn't be the word to describe it. We've talked. Well, about it's this. out on Linux. That's good, right? Ad nauseum. That's Rise of the Tomb Raider TM. <laughs> Finally, after the initial release in 2016, Feral has brought it to the Linux. Kind of. It's currently on sale on Steam right now. 1979. You might want to pop over there and do it, but now when you scroll down to the bottom, it says SteamOS plus Linux. It's got a couple of notes. Minimum requirements, 1710 with a Kumbuntu's. 8 gigs of RAM, all right. 12 gigs recommended. We've talked about this. Recommended video card, 980 Ti. Requires Vulkan. This is your Ooh. primary render. This is absolutely mm -hmm. a thing. And if you're on NVIDIA, they want you to have the latest and greatest video drivers, which kind of made me go, wait, wait, wait a hot damn second here. Ser seriously, 396.18? Because that's only slightly less of a shit show than the 390s. <laughs> but there we are. And it's all still recommended with Intel, to which I say, what, what, what about the R3s, the R5s, R7s, Gen 2, Ryzen's, you know, the top selling processor of 2017, that one? Why can't we get some numbers on that? Uh, Intel graphics, you're out of luck, but you probably already knew that. Um, I tried it. The, 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 I tried it. Some high end asks. I tried it, and mm -hmm. um, shit didn't work. 
<laughs> I, I cleared off. I cleared off my Thursday. Now I talked about this in the um, fr- uh, All Star Fubo on Friday. Um, couldn't get it to work out of the box. Downloaded it, something like twelve gigs. It wasn't massive. Might have been twenty gigs. I can't tell. I got a lot of bandwidth now, and it's very expensive. Uh, to get it to launch, I had to kill Compton. This was this was me working it back. Had to kill the, yeah, you have to kill the compositor in order to get that to launch. And even then, I could only get it in 1080p window. Which is like, well, then that should be sufficient. Not not a new HD monitor. I actually was able to tap the brakes and say, exactly. I was like, I am not experiencing this game that I've been waiting on for almost two years in a l- little 1080p window. Um, I wanted to play it full screen. A lot of other people are having errors with it. We've seen a lot of chatter in Discord from people who absolutely know how to Linux this saying mm. that uh, they're seeing, I mean, this is a Vulcan title, spite crashes. Uh, the most common one that I've seen on Reddit, on the Twitters and other places is if you get the notification of somebody's playing game, you know, whoever's playing game locks mm-hmm. it straight to desktop. That's the thing. I, <laughs> so, I mean, Trugs, Trugs said earlier, man, he, he sent me a message. He's like, if you, Friends playing that pop up freeze straight to desktop. Uh, spite crashes seem semi common, but when it does run in a 1080p window on high, I was averaging like 82.42 for so. There's that. Mm. There's my uh, port report <laughs> on that business. I, I I gotta say though, like some of the, some of these specifications, like. I look, just just for a lark, just because I still haven't set up the other 4K monitor yet, because mm-hmm. I'm still shopping for like a like a monitor arm. Uh, yeah, I was like, okay, what, what what's it gonna cost me if I pull the trigger on a 1080 Ti? Twelve hundred dollars? Yeah, I can just build a new computer for that. So mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, the the thing that you mentioned, Ven, about the game freezing when uh, you get a little Steam notification. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember a game that used to do that a while back. It was called the Talos Principle when they first released the Vulcan renderer, like two years ago. <laughs> no, a year ago or something like that. It's like, oh, oh, we're going back to that, are we? Back to basics with Feral. Okay, all right. Well, this is what left me just a little bit on the confused side because Feral has played around with Vulcan and Mad Max works very well mm-hmm. I, I would say i'd give that like a 98 95 98 percent uh they were testing it with hitman that that mm-hmm. is just rough experience failed but miserably yes f1 2017 vulcan only had no issues with that this this i've been <laughs> saying on record for three to four weeks it's like i i'm not feeling this, this is uh, radio communications probably also not a good idea to release something this big with this many holes on a thursday mm-hmm. also want yeah. to throw that out there <laughs> uh let us know send us some feedback what your experiences have been because i know some people have genuine like I, not a single problem so anyway we need to talk about this because sam i am baby yes. Oh yeah, hail, hail to the chief! Wait, no, that's 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 a different guy. No, serious, Sam. Four hail planet king, badass. Baby. It's uh, <laughs> it's coming. When is it coming? We don't know. But there's a lovely photograph of Mister Serious Samuel on on a motorcycle. He's got a shotgun, much like uh, what's his fuck mm-hmm. from Resident Evil. Um, and uh, I, I listen. I'm just glad to see like some non-brown color in my serious Sam for once. <laughs> phrasing, <laughs> because or, wait, or are we not doing phrasing anymore? <laughs> yeah. said, 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 uh, said Bishop to the Android with the, or Ripley to the Android Bishop. No, um, like that, that's that's the thing though. Like the the color palette of serious Sam BFB was so monotonous. It that that entire game just blurred together. I'm actually genuinely excited for this because. <laughs> they, they they seem to be aware that uh, the the lack of color in the last game was sort of a sort of a sticking point for a couple people. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure this is going to eat up a couple Thursday streams. Uh, we we might when if this drops uh, in the near future, we're gonna we're gonna devote some time to clearing this out. On, hey man, on stream, well, one of the good things I'm looking at is it's still to be announced. They said they're gonna give everyone yeah. give everyone a sweet taste E3 2018, but but Linux is already on the page. For our supported yeah, yeah, because because Crow Team, because yeah, because Crow Team, Crow Team built up their engine so that they could say, "Hey, we need to support a platform." Oop, okay, we support a platform. Uh, yep, 
Like it's all, uh, all, no, all it's fucking, great to see all all, all, all the pain in like the serious Sam. <laughs> I love it. I, I am the thigh master. <laughs> all, all, all the pain in uh, Serious Sam Fusion 2017. Um, all, 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 all that feedback is actually going and improving the, the Serious engine so that we're going to have a nice Vulcan experience when SS4 comes out. So I'm, I'm excited. Yeah, and they made it, yeah. like, to quote them, a brutally bigger scale. A lot of people are thinking, oh, it might be an open world, which, all right, uh, uh, Grand Theft Sam, Mo- and they did say in not mm-hmm. a single desert level. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the cake is a lie, and it's true for Serious M4. But it's, uh, I was looking at the trailer, and much to your comment under the show notes there, I was like, yeah, that looks just like the Serious M3 engine with a bit more green to it. It, so it, it looks it's... like an apology for all the desert levels. <laughs> Yeah, no, straight, straight, straight up, and I, I'm I'm looking forward to being apologized to what with my Canadian blood. Boy. Apologize all over my face, chest, and neck, baby. Mm-mm-mm. All right, <laughs> uh, up up next. Hey, hey, kids, you want you want to wrestle? Uh, this, this is an early access game for Double Turn. It is a pro wrestling uh, party brawler for players. Um, and yeah, we we don't have a lot of fighting games on Linux, so mm-hmm. it's always good to promote yep. the few that we have. Um. Yeah, uh, they, they have on. They got online co-op. They got local multiplayer. That's fun. You can do two on two tag teams. The one thing that kind of I I hope that they actually take the opportunity to. to hey man, somebody they're, they're, they're ripping a little Mega Man off on that, baby. Um, they they they, they are. <laughs> oh, just 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 a tad. But four four fighters seems like a pretty shallow pool. I really really hope that they straight up just add a couple more fighters. Like maybe eight. That that would be a good. You, you you have some more combinations than that. And mm-hmm. everyone looks like a ripoff of a famous pro wrestler from that one wrestling program that we're not going to mention on the show. Because <laughs> they get it's a bit copyright bucks. happy. Yeah, <laughs> they, they they do. Can 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 you smell what uh, the borosilicate is cooking? Pandas, baby. Hey, it's got mm-hmm. online multiplayer, so it's got that going for it. Yes, right. Definitely, they, uh, they, online they, they online they multiplayer start. is. The one way that if you have an early access game like this one and you want people to get into it early on and get you some of that money, you put online multiplayer, you get it working, and you just watch as people go, oh, this is actually okay. Oh, look, YouTubers are picking up on it. Oh, crap, we're actually selling the game now. And then you never leave early access, so please don't do that. All right, Mm. stop. (laughs) Collaborate and listen. yeah, I was I was I was gonna go with Hammer Time. This is uh, we we got we got uh, another Frozen Wasteland survival horror game. Ooh, so Ice. original! The, it's so hot right now. <sighs> oh, dude, it's it's been a fucking Frozen Wasteland up in Canada for like the past week. I'm I'm sick of these games. If only because like th- th- that was my okay, experience. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Was, this, was, this is ice. This is ice. This is protagonist winter fishing. Should I, all right? Do we give this game a complete pass if you're capable of building a log cabin? <laughs> well, you'd have to build an igloo, right? There are no trees around. Yeah. Fucking and, dream crushing but... mother. <laughs> Listen, an igloo is almost in log cabin. Okay, it's hang on, hang on. Hey. What if you can suicide yourself with a flare gun? In the igloo? Yes. Yeah, well, there is a flare gun. It. It's just... <laughs> okay, now I have to ask. Uh, the hoodie... Apparently Canadians throw grenades and shit at each other. I don't know. What the (laughs) fuck? Zombies probably. You see that hoodie that he's got there? Is that going to be on screen the whole freaking time? Because what the fuck? I I, I just, that was the first time I've watched the trailer and it's coming in as mixed and it shows up as Linux in the (laughs) depot, but it's showing Windows only right now. Maybe that's a good thing Mm -hmm. though. Um, Yeah, it could be. (laughs) As for the hood, that's just how Canadians see things. Like for me, it's like you get the you get the double hood effect. <laughs> oh man, that is a thing. Uh, what do we get up next? Uh, oh, we have one last little bit, don't we? Just one last little bit. Yes, one last bit of racing, racing. Well, it, May fifteenth, we'll yeah. know whether or not it's actually fun. Okay. It's Horizon what Chase the Turbo. Fuck, Pedro. What colors on top of that story, son? 
Yeah, you were looking for things, so I would. No, oh, I wasn't I looking know. for anything. <laughs> Damn, but he can't help himself. All right, he just wants to steal everything. <laughs> No, no, Matt, down, Pedro. Down. Spray bottle. <laughs> yeah. Horizon Chase Turbo Man is classic retro inspired. What? Well, there's a billion of these out there. A thrilling arcade racing game. And straight from the 90s. Doesn't that make you feel old? Available May 15th. Uh, the only, only reason I'm bringing this up is because I was like, oh, it's a racing game. That might be fun to play. Uh, um, one of our streams during the week. Single player or local multiplayer? local co-op mm-hmm. split screen I, I, yeah I, I think we need to redirect them to the flow chart where do you have multiplayer in your game in 2018 yes it should be online multiplayer <laughs> this t- <laughs> listen man no no online multiplayer in a racing game in 2018 bold cut bold cotton strategy fuck me um mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's, it's bold cut strategy uh, <laughs> you're, 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 you're playing with yourself that, that's it that that's basically yeah. you're going to be playing forever alone mode because if you get a group of people together at your house and you're chilling out sorry they don't want to play horizon chase turbo they might want to play gran turismo or something they're familiar with mm-hmm. um and you know this is running unity it's got built-in matchmaking in Unity. It's dog shit, but it's better than nothing. So Yeah, at least it kind of sort of works for mm-hmm. the most part. And uh, it's I was looking at it, it's like, oh, it's Outrun, but with 3D uh, polygonal graphics and not a whole lot of textures, which kind of makes it, it plainly it, obvious it that kinda, this is most definitely a Unity game. <laughs> It it also kind of it kind of reminds me of a bit like PlayStation late PlayStation PlayStation Two E mm-hmm. just from the screenshots yeah well uh, I mean there's the that and there's some uh, like drift drifting earlier like eighties sure. outrun game yeah I follow their Twitter mm-hmm. account this game's been in early access almost as long as distance and the guy's still posting updates on it like, <laughs> yeah man I'm really working on this new I was like let it go. Let it go. Yeah, distance. Hey, a racing <laughs> game with multiplayer. How about that? That's like four years old. Hey, we need to let the segment go. We 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 do much like uh, Elsa in Frozen. We gotta take our clothes off and change into ice princesses. I don't know where I'm going with that. Coming up next, we drop some drama bombs on the uh, GPP scandal. Scandalous. That was a small sting segment well smaller than the previous ones we did but now we get to uh basically put ourselves out to judge you know well to be judged uh you get to decide whether or not we deserve your hard earned tried very hard not to say an h on that one uh wet stinky caches so jordan tell the lovely people how they if they want to can give us some monies I'm still in awe about how disconnected all those various words were. And it's, it's yes. a thing of beauty. You can, you, can, you can support this train wreck and enable Pedro to go on more and more drunken rants by heading on over to the uh, support the show page on linuxgamecast.com. Just click that support link. We got all sorts of... Uh, man, l- listen, your thighs are going to be so beefy. Just squeeze squeeze me between them. That's, that's how, how it works. Now, uh, we, got, we got lots of interesting st- things for you to click on and enter your credit card number afterwards. Uh, we got Amazon affiliate links, Newegg affiliate links, Humble affiliate links. We got, you name it, we got an affiliate link for it. We got LibrePay, Bitcoin, PayPal, all that good shit. But of course, all the cool kids and all the cool stuff is located at uh, patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Patreon? What, what is that? Is That, that sounds like it sounds fishy. I don't, um, I don't know if I trust it, it, it man. It, I don't know. It, 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 it is. They're, they're going to charge you a separate transaction fee for every person you support. But... Uh, <laughs> Topical. Well, uh, they they will you, you, at some point. At, at some point, but you can you can head on over there. Uh, give give us a buck. You get some cool stuff. You get access to our Discord channel. You get access to um, some of the show notes if you're of a correct level. You can even contribute. You can um, get a buy in for when we do multiplayer streams. Ven's doing a thing on Friday where he's just playing some video games with the peeps. Getting on that uh, Patreon gets you an invite. So lots of cool stuff, lots of exclusive content with the Patreons as well. You even get some timed releases or timed exclusive releases of stuff, so you can watch us fart around on the internet uh, for a, a couple a couple days earlier than the rest of these plebs. 
I, I don't know. We got we got we got a uh, we also got uh, Frank's fuckwall too. Did uh, mm-hmm. Truggy uh, did, did Truggy contribute to that, or was he? Yeah, I, th- I think where, where where's Frank today? Anyways, hey man, uh, Frank couldn't be here with us this evening because he decided to go to a lock in at his church. But I I, I do want to thank Truggs real quick because we we have a wish zone, and that's how you end up on Frank's fuck wall you become one of frank's fuckos and it's kind of brilliant and when you do that you can send in a little note which contractually obligated to read on air <laughs> <clears throat> but he picked us up I, I, I shit you not i was like holy fuck uh trugs went through our wish zone and picked the arts and crafts package which is exciting uh fancy shit like wallpaper and um shelving which we actually need thank you drugs you know i love you for that and this is going to put me to work to help build out some extra stuff and ideas we have in the studio but 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 a gift for you from drugs hi linux gamecast enjoy your gift now you need more cheap things on your wish list motherfucker okay <laughs> motherfucker uh butter, butter and oil. hashtag butter and oil infuser man wait, wait, hang on no 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 <laughs> Oh, I'm not getting audio again, but I, I think Frank's got his, uh, what? W- yep. We got a live feed from Frank. He's at his revival, his lock-in this evening at church, getting a religious look at that. They are having fun, man. We should go to church. It looks like a wrestling match. Yeah. It, lo- it looks like they're playing tag, I think. Is that tag? <laughs> huh. I've never played tag like that. There's a lot of, uh, fainting. Cl- clearly, uh, there's a lot of jerking. Okay. Hey, I mean, listen, man. I, I I just wish Frank would pick a more mainstream religion. So uh, you know, I'm like just glad a, uh, Frank doesn't do. have muscles because those people are having a lot of uh, muscle spasms there. Good on you, Frank. We don't judge. Praise Jesus. Well, hopefully, yep. you'll be back with us in our loving arms next week. Thanks everyone for making this possible, and double so for everyone going through the humble links. We made a couple of bucks off that, and we're still doing really good on the Amazon affiliate links. And we we don't have to read ads, and we can do a bullshit show that you can trust. We're not getting bought off, you know. Hey, buy a mattress. Hashtag whatever. Let's talk some mm-hmm. shit about AMD and Nvidia. GC. Drama bomb. Gamer tax. Oh my God. It's like who team should we be on, man? A promotional push by NVIDIA has apparently tied up PC builders. Not really. That's uh, Bitcoin miners and cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. Uh, the current leaders in the graphic card market, NVIDIA has apparently developed a GeForce, but the GPP is they're calling it, uh, to, and I quote, ensure that gamers have full transparency into GPU platform. It, it It's a racket, man. It is a fucking racket because... They're making vendors sign this shit. They're saying, okay, mm-hmm. you, want, you want to be part of this program? And I'm like, okay. Uh, but you don't have to be. You don't have to be. It, it's cool. This is how they phrase it. Uh, but, you know, if you are part of it, you know, you get a, we'll help you out with the technical shit and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. maybe some exclusive attention and stuff like that. And then, then there's like this black hole of shady shit and like you can't mm-hmm. talk about i mean they, they could be making them do all type of like stuff that's not legal and one of the things being your gaming brand whatever you want to call it uh it has to be nvidia it's no sure. longer amd yeah <clears throat> you, whatever brand you associate uh yourself with the gpp can only sell NVIDIA's hardware. Uh, so we've already seen like the murmurs of people like Asus and Acer and uh, Gigabyte and a few others. So, uh, there have been some rumors that they're turning like ROG, uh, the Predator, the uh, uh, what's EVGA's one called? I can't remember. The FTW? Bah. Whatever it is. They're basically turning those brands into NVIDIA only, and they're creating a new one for the AMD. Hey, Pedro, Pedro, and, Pedro, a- AMD is like, you know what? We're, we're going to come up with our own gaming brand. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, uh, AMD put out a video, and it's like, yes, we give people the freedom of choice. And it's uh, it's just a video 
carefully uh, constructed and carefully worded not to directly call out NVIDIA on anything because they're just saying we are giving people the ability to choose to do whatever they want with their brand because it's their brand. Mm -hmm. We are not forcing any of our partners to the um, partnership program or anything the matter, uh, anything the sort, sorry. And that's really loud. Uh, <laughs> it's... Uh, it's AMD is basically trying to take a pot shot at NVIDIA without actually taking a pot shot at NVIDIA. So, I don't know. They need to put out a bit of hardware to support their, uh, you know, the these claims that it's the freedom of choice. Yeah, it would be great to have a choice, you know, something that would provide 1080 level performance without sucking 300 watts and costing 1200 bucks. That would be choice. Yeah, man. I mean, uh, what's his name? Uh, the vice president, Scott, uh, over at AMD, uh, he made a post. Mm, Tenor, and, Tenorman? T- no, not Tenorman, Brad. Not Tenorman. He said, over the uh, coming weeks, you can expect to see our ad and boards partners launch new brands to carry the AMD Radian product. AMD is pledging to reignite this freedom of choice when gamers choose an AMD Radian RX graphics card. This is now AMD going, listen, motherfuckers, we're in second place. We got to uh, step up the game. They got to do this. Mm-hmm. And AMD's responsible for stuff we use, like Vulcan. That was based off Mantle. They have FreeSync. It's a good technology. More people should adopt it. What NVIDIA is doing mm-hmm. is a dick move because a lot of companies are under NDA. And NVIDIA is doing just be silent, silent. Don't don't say a word. Don't address this. And let's hope it blows over. It's not blowing over. I don't think quite as good as they had hoped it had. And listen, man, I, I want me some corporate war because we all win. <laughs> but I agree yeah. with you, Pedro. AMD needs a piece of kit that makes me go, ooh, shiny. Yeah. I, I mean, the, the the other thing, too, is like the prices of the GPUs these days are ridiculous. And of course, like you said, you can blame cryptocurrency miners for all that shit. I, I, I don't know. The, the GPP stuff is like, patently anti-competitive it, it is you can't you can't mm-hmm. argue around it it's basically saying hey remember all those names that you looked for when you're buying video card in the past now they're all our shit so you're gonna those are the first things you're gonna search for something something brand loyalty something something mm-hmm. but at the same time mm-hmm. of course uh, I, th- there's nothing i can say that i haven't mentioned before amd needs to come up with a competitive gpu product in order for this to actually work. Well, something I want to run by it because AMD's already come out and said, uh, what's their next gen pager? Navi? Navi's the next one? Yeah. Hey, hey listen. Yeah. Hey, listen. Hey, Blam. Listen. All right, that should be a mod. Um, <laughs> they're saying that they're going to make a, a little Navi card next year that is going to offer 1080 performance for like mm-hmm. under 300 quid. Yeah, we, we've heard this That's before. Great. Yes, we have a lot of times. Uh, remember when the 480 came out and Raji Kadu- Russia Kaduri came out on stage and said, oh, yeah, two of these will outperform a 1080. They didn't. Mm-hmm. They still don't. They never will. And we've seen these kind of promises uh, over and over again from AMD, especially on the uh, GPU side of things. But it would be really awesome if they could, say, provide a, I don't know, 120 watt TDP uh, graphics card for like 300 bucks for that would give you the, the exact same performance as a 1080 or even a little bit higher. That would be awesome. That would put Nvidia in check. And well, even at the $250 mark, all this business in our show notes, all the links. Uh, Tweakdown kind of looked at that and was like, man, you can barely buy the memory at current pricing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to pull that off right now. What's that, the HBM5 memory? Is that what HBM2. It? HBM2. HBM2. I'm yeah. making shit up, man. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I'd like to see it. 250 would just be... Here's the thing. It is so much better now than it was just a year ago with AMD support, mm-hmm. graphics support under mm-hmm. Linux, especially in 416, kernel-wise. $250? Jordan, that's a fucking curiosity buy right there. No, that's that's a yoink. This is this is why I've been like refreshing on like I'm I'm excited. Like uh, uh, Lenovo's coming out with some like Ryzen based ThinkPads, and I'm just like, 
I I really want to see how easy it is, like with the open source graphics drivers and everything. Mm-hmm. Just install kernel 415, 416, whatever. Install Mesa 18. Can I can I just game? Because that would be I get we've we've been chatting this for months. If AMD can yeah. provide a better out of the box experience than NVIDIA, there will be so many converts. Because mm-hmm. wait, wait, waiting yep. for PPA to update is a pain in the butt. Run, downloading the run file and switching to run level three and blah 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 and dealing with the DKMS failures is a pain in the butt. If it's all cooked into the operating system and graphics stack, and it just works, you're you're in literally you, you out of the box for the Linux market. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be a thing. Looking forward to the days. And seriously, that's not something we say. I with Jordan hundred percent, and we are both running nine eighties. We have given nvidia some coin so it's not like yeah yeah so if, 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 as, soon, as soon as they're a better option bye bye beautiful but you know that's not the case okay uh vulcan's a thing that's it, it. let's talk it's, about it's it. the future yeah so uh there we've we've not directly talked about this before i don't think but we've mentioned it in passing it's dx vk they've had a they've had a flurry of releases it looks like they're actually doing some kind of agile development methodology just something I haven't seen in the corporate world for a while. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. That's just me being salty fucking salary man. Salty salary man. There you go. That's show title. Uh, yeah. So in, in essence, what this is, it's a DLL you can compile. It implements all of the DirectX 11 functions using Vulkan and allows them to pass through. So you don't have to have um, Wine do the... Uh-huh. And does all the heavy lifting in the background, yes. ships back the game, and away and away you go. Now, they this is this can be a little pro- be a little problematic because an online game fucking around to the DirectX libraries might get your ass banned. But in terms of uh improving uh, DirectX 11 support in wine, this is instead of using their built-in implementation, this is a very attractive option because it removes the the conversion tax, as it were. So they have a uh, they have a new version out, uh not 0.42. Um, they've, uh, implemented some tes- uh, semantics for tessellation. They fixed some bugs. Nino Cooney supposedly works. And, uh, Pedro, did you try this out with, uh, your Dark Souls stream or was that just DirectX 11 and Wine? No, that's just a uh, DirectX 11 in Wine staging 3.5, uh, whichever one's the latest version in, uh, Striders, Repo, and Lutris. Yeah, that was just running, mm-hmm. uh, regular Wine staging. Uh... Which works great, by the way. Uh, Dark Souls 2 is very much playable, even with everything jacked up to 11, so good job. Uh, it's yeah. great to see DXVK, uh, and there has been uh, Strider uh, himself linked me a video of someone playing Dark Souls 3, which currently doesn't work in wine at all. Uh, so with DXVK, it was actually working. Admittedly, they were running it with the... Um, like medium to low graphical settings because mm-hmm. uh yeah it's it's a much more demanding game than dark souls 2 was so it's it's progress it's very good progress really the only thing i'm not not even concerned about but it, you were saying jordan that this this takes some of the well a significant chunk of the conversion tax out of running a game does this start becoming a viable option for developers to go? Hmm. Well, that that's sort of like the ongoing debate. There was like some pissy Reddit thread um, a couple weeks ago about like, oh, what? wine's getting better. Yeah, <laughs> pissy Reddit thread. Who the fuck it? People like, whining like, was on Reddit? Reddit? No. I mean, I mean, cur- curb curb your shock, man. I have other things to say. I got the vapors, <laughs> man. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the vapors. No, but he was, he was saying like, oh, wine's getting too good now. No developer is going to want to target Linux because they can just target wine. I'm, you know what? At this point, if be, because of like all of this fucking um, what, what's 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 the new uh, Windows Store format? Like, if that starts taking uh, off, in UWP. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, Universal Windows Profile. If that shit gets enough developers pissed off. That might I, I, I don't think Microsoft would ever really stop supporting it, but they they might they might pull that trigger, and if they do, Wine becomes a dominant Win32 API, and it would be it would be interesting to say like this is just like some generic thing you can target that will work on Linux, mm-hmm. work on Windows, and if Wine and DXVK can get to the point where it just works out of the box, 
I'm not sure how yeah. I feel about that because you're you're no longer targeting Windows. You're targeting an API that's supported across multiple platforms. Yeah, you're still dealing with Windows bullshit, but at the same time, we got playable games on Linux. So, and if you can make a plugin for Visual Studio to output some wine-friendly code or wine-friendly binaries, as it were, uh, that would be better. That would be nice. We'll see. I look forward to our new direct Vulcan overlord. So if you need to check whether or not your GPU supports Vulcan, what type of OpenGL it's capable of, and maybe a little OpenCL might, might have a tool for you. It may. Uh, it may indeed. Uh, sorry, I was completely distracted there. Squirrel! Uh, so this is GPU Viewer 1.9, and uh, there's it's, it's a new release. Uh, I think we talked about this on Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays a while back when they had another uh, point-something release. Uh, and it's, well... It, the new version's available. Uh, you can now filter through the properties uh, and the sub-properties when you're looking at, say, Vulkan. Okay, which um, which extensions for Vulkan do I support? You can actually filter them out by the different uh, top-level extensions and get all just the, uh, the sub-levels from there. They also reduce the icon width and height. Uh, they updated the NVIDIA and Intel icons. Because, yes. And uh, Vulkan Info Detection is better now. It no longer shows the Vulkan tab if the system doesn't support Vulkan, which means you're probably running, uh, I don't know, a For Me card or a pre Ivy Bridge Intel GPU or a pre GCN 1.2 mm-hmm. AMD GPU, something like that. So and this is uh, basically a front end for GLX Info, right? And Vulcan Info, yes. All right. There's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's currently available as a PPA for 1804. It's in the AUR if you want that. And um, I guess you can just compile it, right? Or is there anything? Yeah, you can, yeah, just, you can. You can just build it. I mean, it's 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 a GitHub project, right? They got a... Mm-hmm. Uh, they got a source yeah. Yeah. Do, yeah. Yeah. They, do they have a... Uh, I, th- I think they use like Ninja or Mason or something for building. I have, Yay, Ninja. Oh. Stop. Collaborate. Yeah, if you're going to get on Ubuntu, there's a PPA. It's easier. Speaking speaking of collaboration, uh, Flippet wants you to do some work because he has a lot of shit to do and he needs to format some tasks and he's willing to pay about 500 bucks for this. So this is a, this is one of the flippant bounties. We talked about this a while ago. He's opened this one up about uh, five days ago. And he says, uh, we need a set of DLLs that will hook uh, directly into um, X audio uh, through FNA. So what it basically means is you got to go through the wine source code, the, their implementation of X audio, and then just add a bunch of mm-hmm. FNA hooks so that... Um, the uh, shit will work. So th- this is kind of like an interesting goal because what... Flippet is trying to do is he's trying to like get a relinker working to where you can just feed your binary, your, like your XNA binary to this system and it'll just swap out all the XNA code with FNA code or it'll just, it'll just relink all the libraries and then you'll be good. And this, this is a step to getting that working because you'll have X audio DLLs in like the windows wine space that will actually understand FNA. Um, they, he figures it will take about a weekend. This is, this is just like a really cool thing. They're just, they're, they're trying, they're trying to make FNA as simple as possible to just switch your XNA game over to. And that, that, that's a really good goal. Um, appa- apparently, uh, the audio subs, the audio middleware, um, has been a big uh, point of contention for a- XNA games that were looking at porting over to FNA. They've had, he says in the little bounty that most places have done at least some work trying to port over to FNA. But the audio middleware is problematic, so this is this is a step on the way to fixing that. Uh, so if you're someone who wants to do that, uh, you can get five hundred bucks. If you're looking for five hundred bucks, man, definitely one hundred percent on that. And it looks like somebody's already started work. Uh, good on that. Drop in <laughs> it, it, replacement, man. And F and A is doing great. Simply because I mean, it's saving a lot of games that would probably have died on the Xbox. Yep. So yeah, it's huge. It's huge for game preservation. Uh, like. Uh, Charlie Murder, Dishwasher, Vampire Simile, all, yep. all that shit is FNA. Owl Boy. Yeah. Hey man, since we're on a roll, including with consoles, introducing new features. Yeah. 
<laughs> like busted ass network. No, it's player. just we love you, Fibbit. Yes, <laughs> there were some hiccups, but yeah, it was nice to see. <laughs> And finally, also on GitHub, since uh, we're on a bit of a GitHub streak, we have the Switch Pro controller for Linux through USB. Now, if you have a Switch, maybe oh, you didn't I have want, a whole lot wait of Wait a luck. minute. I wanted a Switch Pro controller for, like, external SCSI, too. Yeah, you could probably yeah, get yeah, enough adapters yeah, to yeah, make yeah, that you're gonna possible. You're going to need some solder for that. <laughs> Patreon goal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, if you have a Switch and you forked out for the uh, the Pro Controller, the Xbox looking one, and you wanted to, uh, maybe you have a Linux PC and you wanted to try to play some games on it, there is some basic support for it already. It's, I believe it's a D-input controller, um, but if you'd like a proper driver for it, it doesn't exist yet, but this is a start. Uh, this is the driver itself, you can just pull the git, build it from sauce. Uh, you need libudev, libusb, libfox, and just a couple of other build tools, including CMake. So if you don't like CMake, tough. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a start. It's most definitely a start, and it's... Uh, it, I mean, the udev rules, the bit that you need for the udev rules to set the controller to actually work with the uh, for Linux to see the controller as a uh, an X input controller, it just screams like, "Oh, it's a Steam controller type of thing." And it would be awesome uh, if you with this driver does does it though? I mean, it just screams like this is a weird piece of hardware that it's trying to detect. So let's explicitly add permissions in UDEV so that people can use it. I'm just gonna throw it's. <laughs> Would kind of like the Steam controller. I honestly, <laughs> if if I would have connected this and it didn't work out of the box, I'm like, what the hell? Well, and and, and that's the thing too. I'm sure like Flibit is hacking away at like SDL two to just make this work. Quite possibly, yeah. I guess it's kind of you know this is not the ones that you can easily lose the Joy Cons that go flying into. You got to intentionally throw no. this motherfucker into a TV. Yeah, um, well, I'm I'm terrified of losing these guys. I need to like do the one two switch thing. She's like, well, where'd it go? Is it up my butt? Um, <laughs> probably. But that's where, that's where that's where that's where number two is. Here's the one thing you can say about the pro controller is it's not just two of those uh, fused together with duct tape. It's actually different hardware. No, yeah. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, yeah and it would be great to have, uh, especially SDL two functionality with this driver developer person, please. Get on that. Pedro, because Pedro, you, just walk, Pedro just walked into a free open source project. He's like, work harder. No, no, <laughs> I'm just no, saying, the, SDL2 the, is going to get you Steam compatibility. It's going to get you a shit ton of non-Steam game compatibility. Just use SDL2, please. Please. No, no. For for me, the the one the one issue I have with this is just it's like a demon that you have to run to connect. It would be better if like someone did like an actual kernel level driver for it, so you can just plug it in and be mm -hmm. like, hey, I got a, I have a generic input device, doop doop. But I mean, I guess this is a first step. Maybe maybe someone will take what they learned yeah. here and apply it to a kernel module. Uh, I think that does it for the news. What's up next? Unless unless. Up next, I, I, I gotta, I gotta take my time. There's, 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 there's so much we have to explain to you about how sitting on a magical chair will impart you superpowers. That's, that's right. And then that's right. Oh man, as Ben hit the clapboard, I realized, man, I should have pulled out a Dark Tower quote for this because I've been riding that bandwagon for, I don't know, since I read the Dark Tower, like fucking half a decade ago. Actually, shit, more. Anyways, Stephen King aside, this is the chair acquisition for the Tower of Time. It's developed by Event Horizon, which is not a Stephen King property, and it's done on the Unity engine. Uh, what is it? Tower Time is an incredible adventure packed with over 50 hours of gameplay, handcrafted levels, and a rich story told through cinematics. Uh, we'll get to that. Taking a classic RPG gameplay to the next level, Tower of Time features flexible character development, thousands of pieces of loot and equipment, and a complex tactical arrow time, real-time combat system time. Time, time, time has come again. 
time. <laughs> Hanging on in quiet desperation is, is the English way. Uh, this is the share QA edition. This is where we take a game. We play it for a little bit. Maybe we show you some footage of it, like uh, what you're seeing right now. Audio listeners, too bad. Uh, and we uh, talk about it, give our thoughts, and maybe perform a little bit of quality assurance that should have been done before they uh, push this shit to prod. Uh, the devs did send us some keys for this, so uh, thank you very much, Event Horizon. Now let's proceed to tear your game apart. Welcome to the Chairquisition. <laughs> One chair means that it's garbage. Two chairs means that it's meh. Three chairs means that it's pretty good. Four chairs means that it's awesome. And we apply those to our categories of doom, mixed with the working, shiny, sass controls, and fun. Mm-hmm. So, Ven, you were the only one who had issues getting this up and running? Question mark? Listen, man, I, I wouldn't say I had issues getting it up and running. I, I never have issues getting it up. Good turn around. <laughs> who told you? Uh, <laughs> check it out, man. You know, really, there is nothing to complain about with this game except for the fucking performance, man. This thing struggles to hold 60 at 1080p on a 980. Like, well, it's a Unity title. It's probably CPU bound, hammering on that one thread. No, Unity's actually done a good job of sorting that. On the 1700, all 16 threads are humming along nicely to the point to where the 1700's like, what, is there game running? I can't tell. Um, but outside of the dog poop performance, also during the uh, cinematics audio popping. I mean, it's not mm-hmm. a deal breaker, but you know, I can't give it a clean bill of health, man. I can give it three chairs, but yeah, not 100% on that, man. On uh, Fedora 26, 64-bit with the i7-6700K GTX 980, yeah, I noticed there was there it, it was not hitting 60 frames at 1080p, but also I had two screen recorders running on that, so I don't know how well that ran in isolation. I didn't I didn't check when I played it afterwards because I didn't care to. Um, everything worked fine out of the box. I clicked play. I didn't have to edit ini files. God damn it, fucking Neverwinter Nights. I'm still salty at you for that. Um, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll give it a solid four. It's fine. Pedro? Yeah, I did notice some of the uh, audio popping, with, especially with the intro cutscene, but beyond that, I didn't hear any more of it, so I'm, go- I'm just going to call that a one-off for that particular cutscene. And I didn't really notice any of the performance issues, so four chairs for me. All right, on, confirmation uh, bias incoming. Exactly. <laughs> I was about to ask you, what are we I'm all sure. running it on? 1604? Uh, I'm 1604 with a Ryzen 1600 and GTX 1080. I'm doing 1710 with a 980, 1700, and Jordan's tipping my lead. Uh, I said that already. Uh, Fedora 2664-bit, i7-6700. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, that is Three chairs for mixed working. <laughs> Three chairs. Three. 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 Listen, for, listen, come by a Linux Gamecast chair acquisition. Get a free chair. <laughs> Anyways, sh- shiny and sounds. Um, I mean, okay, I'll, I'll give I'll give the game that it has some decent production quality. Much better than we've seen uh, in a lot of games um, that we've covered on the show. Oh hell yeah. Um the back yeah, the, the backgrounds are really well done. There's like generic fantasy orchestral. We're, we're trying to be Hans Zimmer, Lord of the Rings type shit. And you just turn out to be some generic music that you just kind of put in the background. That that That's all well and good. Um, but really, really, when it boils down to the gameplay, uh, the characters are just kind of like these random pillars of eternity style st- sprites running around and when like the combat gets really chaotic you just lose your character especially when there are certain powers where you can't click on your character icon to target a specific icon uh character you have to click on the character itself it becomes like what the fuck am i doing did i aim it on the right thing i don't know it's committed it that 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 actually impacts gameplay and so i have to ding it a mm-hmm. chair for that otherwise it might have gotten three but instead it gets dos okay i, I didn't have any Serious issues with it? I mean, it looks all right. Listen, when this game starts off, you're like, oh, shit, I might be in for something. Because you never know. You never know, Brad. You don't. But this has like, got decent background music. Everything's going on. The environments, holy hell, wicked detail. I was like, That's really good. Almost to a fault, because the character models don't look as good as the backgrounds. And it's character models are perfectly fine, but compared to uh, the tower that you're crawling around in, yeah, not so much. Uh but yeah, generic epic background music definitely did it. Um, there's a decided lack of voice acting in this, really. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to say, because you might need it, but Jordan's going to touch on that a little bit later. It looks fine. Unfortunately, 
I knew it was Unity right out of the box because of the Jaggies. I couldn't do fuck all about unless I go into the NV control panel to set the anti-aliasing manually. That should have been in the options menu. That's another reason to like, hey man, can't give you four chairs on that. Because it makes something, it, it, just, it very, like, has a PS1 vibe to it when you, you see the Jaggies like that in 2018. I'll give it a solid two, though. Pedro? It looks good, but there's something about between the characters and the world. It seems like the characters stick out. It's like they don't belong, mm-hmm. which, uh, you know, having them stick out like that is kind of ironic considering how finicky the game is when you want to select a character from the game world instead of clicking the little thing, but more on that later. Um, aesthetically speaking, it works. I'm still not a big fan of the story dump, as in, oh, here's a cutscene. You don't get to play the game while the cutscene's happening. Oh, here's a big wall of text that literally freezes the game and obscures everything else. Go ahead, read the story. Oh, no. oh, oh. How about oh, you oh. tell me the story as we go? What, uh, what about the pop up <laughs> menus that you can't really figure out where the close button is sometimes? Yeah. Oh, yeah, mash escape. Uh, Yep, it's just, okay, am I back in the game? Okay, right. But yeah, that's where the controls, that's coming up, but uh, it looks and sounds competent. I can't really, you know, it's not the worst we've seen by any means or measure, and if the characters didn't stick out as much as they do, I'd probably give it four chairs, but as it stands, three. <laughs> well, two for you, to you, Pedro, your opinion doesn't matter. I got two <laughs> chairs for the shiny and the sounds. Why don't you tell us about some controls while you're at it, because you're the control stickler. Well, I am. And, uh, you know, you wouldn't really think that the simple admission of a camera rotation feature would introduce such a feeling of limitation to the game. Now, in my opinion, games should uh, be about player agency. It's all about the mechanics, it's all about how you interact with the game, but not letting me rotate the camera or even giving me the option of a quote-unquote free camera outside of combat when you're doing the exploration bits, it's, um, you're literally taking away my ability to interact with your game how I want to. You're taking away my agency. Uh, but more on that later. Again, also, speaking about the uh, character selection cock-ups, I had to resort to using the keyboard for selecting the characters because half the time it wouldn't select the character I wanted and the other half it selected a character when I just wanted to tell the other character I had selected at that point to move close to that first one. It's like, God, that's infuriating. But it works and it gets three chairs. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, you you saw me on the stream where it's like I, I was very yeah. explicitly going key press go here, key press go here, and then sometimes <laughs> like the two guys are like tied together by some invisible leash or something, mm-hmm. like the the shit that you see parents put on children so that uh, so that they don't run away <laughs> at amusement parks. <laughs> but like, yeah, I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna come with you. No, that's not what I told you to do. Fuck off. <laughs> Stay behind the cover and shoot. Oh yeah. Listen, at least you can at least you can rebind the controls. That's the thing. I switched it mm-hmm. from using the arrow keys to pan the camera to WASD. I put the uh, moves on the F keys and I put the party members on the on the number keys. And that worked reasonably well. Like Pedro, though, I would have severely appreciated a camera rotation thing because it mm-hmm. gives you a certain the, the game presents itself as isometric, but that's not true. The maps are 3D. Mm-hmm. And Mm-hmm. characters will wander behind things and then you can't see them and you can't see what they're doing and then you're like well shit this is a combat i'm supposed to strategize i can't do that if i can't see where my people are and that just gets really annoying um yeah much like pedro so, yeah I, I brought up the the selection issues and let's let's be real like the the rules of the combat aren't necessarily great it's basically just a steroided up tower defense game with like a little bit of MOBA thrown in there for good measure, and it, it doesn't it doesn't really work. I'll that that's more for the fun section, but I'll the controls function and you can rebind them into something that's remotely playable. So you can get three chairs on that, but eh, there, 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 there are some yeah. fundamental issues with how they, the game expects you to control or to interact with it. Then there's genuinely an option in this game to build a wall. 
I'm just going to leave that there as I continue on explaining the controls. You know, everything basically works with this. It works out of the box backwards like you would expect it to with the camera movement on the actual arrow keys. Quit doing that. Because, yeah, step one, put it on WASD. No camera rotation. Kind of sucks because you know it's not, you know everything's in 3D. Why you do that? I mean, come on. Seriously. Uh, it does get a little fucky. If you get your gerbil outside, I have five monitors in front of me, so I go outside every now and then. Then it flips out. Usually when you're in the middle of combat, that sucks. It doesn't reward laziness because, say, you're in a tower, right? So you're at point A. You can clearly see way the fuck down where point B and C are. So you're just like, all right, I don't want to click 19 fuck mothering times. And you click point C and the game's like, what? I'm not going to register. The, no, uh -uh. You, you need to click 19 times in order to get down the staircase and go around the corner. I'm not going to do pathfinding for you. So it kind of sucks. Wasn't a big fan of that, but basically everything works, man. Can't give it 100%, but I'll throw in a three. All right, well, that's three chairs for All controls right. with with a bit with with a big old with a big old asteroid next to it. Mm -hmm. They 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 work. You can play the game, but mm -hmm. it's not pretty good. <sighs> fun, uh, Ben. You want you want to take fun? Sure, why not? Upside down tower. Yep, check. Uh, is there a throne in the tower? Check. This, we're not spoiling anything. This is like the first five minutes. Uh, Never gets around to explaining how gravity works in this fucking game because the tower's upside down in the fucking ground and you walk in and everything's right side up. I didn't get that. And they, they, you can't explain that. Two tide goes in, tide <laughs> goes out. Uh, but the game, like, way too quickly became uh, just item barfing the game, kind of like Torchlight 2, Victor Vran. I'm not saying this is a bad thing. Personal opinion. This is our subjective area. I, I just really do lose interest because I'm spoiled for choice when it. Especially with Victor Fran, it is super guilty of this, where you have like six pages and half of them are duplicate mm -hmm. items and stuff like that. You find yourself doing the equivalent of stat juggling. You're like, wait, do I want to use this? Do I want to use this? And when you should be playing the game, learning the story and stuff like that, you shouldn't be an item menu screens. I know Jordan loves shit like that, but that's just not my cup of chainsaw. The combat, agree with you, Jordan, is a little bit boring. Not much to it. Yeah, go find a place, hide, shoot with a ranged, and uh, attack with your tank. Uh, the dialogue, it's a bit of a slag. I wouldn't have minded some bad voice acting or something. It's nope. Mm -mm. The, the game kind of lies to you. It starts off with this epic. It's like, and I'll tell you the tale and all that. Like, all right, this thing's going to talk to me. It's going to read me a bedtime story while I'm playing it. Fuck, no, it's not. It's just going to stop. Then you got to read. Reading's hard, kids. Uh, yeah, would have definitely pro preferred even some bad voice work on that. It does have the mechanic like Darkest D's, where you have an armory, then you have the library and uh, barracks and stuff like that that could be upgraded when you return to town. That's neat. You got to get blueprints. You got to upgrade your stuff. I understand that. And I was like, okay, I get it. A lot of work went into this. It's well done in that aspect, but it just doesn't fit together quite right. And on top of performing like poo for no reason whatsoever. Yeah, mm -mm, it's uh, it's not my cup of chance. I, if, I don't know why. It's just I'm not going to go back and play this. It's not a bad game. It's a well done game. Maybe here's the thing. What do you guys think is... It, it's in that mushy area between clearly an indie title, but not quite a triple A. It's just it's missing just a few of the little bits, man. I'm, I'm going to throw just one because I don't think I'm going to come back to it. Maybe it's a little too generic, too. Jordan? Uh, yeah, I mean, oh man, my biggest problem with this game, gameplay aside, is just the fucking dialogue is so long winding <laughs> winded. It gives Pedro a fucking run for his money. <laughs> uh, but seriously, like by, by the by I've edited this guy's writing before and it's just like, oh my god, shut up, just get to the point. Um every, by the time you get through everything, I or at least for me, like I, I, I gave it a shot. You saw me do it on the stream where it's like, okay, I'm I'm reading this, I'm I'm trying to comprehend. 
And then, like, after the f- second freaking novel, like, Game of Thrones length novel I had to read, I'm just like, no, 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 no. And when they say 50 hours of gameplay, I'm pretty sure that's where, like, the 50 hours actually come from. It's just, like, actually just sitting through di- sitting through and reading shit. Um, so the, here, here's the thing. Like, I, I immediately want to compare it to Divinity just because that's what I've been playing mm-hmm. a lot of recently. Um and divinity gives you so many options you can when especially in terms of dialogue you very rarely ever have to sit through someone's entire rant you, at some point they'll say well what do you want to say to this guy do you want to be the asshole do you want to say go on do you want to dig into this in a little more detail and some missions require you to do that but you're under no obligation whatsoever to actually engage with that part of the game every time you run into some dialogue thing Oh, we gotta go talk. You get you get the freaking proper noun dump of like the 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 citadel of Angmar in 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 the village of like Waterdeep and Skulp. I don't I don't care. Like, there, 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 there's there's a thing in there's a thing in narrative fiction. It's called show don't tell. Show me things. Mm-hmm. Show me the impact of it, and then say and let, let let me ask questions and then reveal answers and then it's a more satisfying thing as opposed to oh yeah you worked really really hard on your fucking fantasy dungeons and dragons game way to give me the entire exposition right off the bat uh anyways that that's that that's neither here nor there i was intrigued by it earlier the final fantasy style of combat system where it's like oh you walk in you don't you don't have to fight everyone immediately you can you can come back when you're ready, even though there's not really much of a point because there's no fucking combats and ex- the leveling process is so slow. Um, you can the, the the whole like oh well now you you go from like overworld map to like where the fuck is this? This is an entirely different location here. Where are we fighting? Did we go into the combat zone? I don't know. It 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 feel it feels like the overworld exploration is really tacked on and. That's kind of bad because the tower is gorgeous. I want to explore it. I want mm-hmm. to do like the role playing game thing and see what this environment has to offer. And the game doesn't really enable me to do that. I would have strongly preferred this sort of game to be more satellite rainy, where I have the full run of it and I have to I have to be careful. I have to think about where I'm going in the tower, uh, plan fights accordingly, and I think that would have been a much more rewarding experience for what this game was going for. As it currently stands, it's just okay. But the combat is the combat, which is where the meat of the game is, is just so boring that I, I can't give it more than two chairs. Okay, I, I got to throw yeah. in a little interjection. Uh, one of the things that I forgot that I left out, I'm watching Pager's video right now, is when you're in an actual fight, this is a boss fight you're looking at now, but just a regular fight, it gives you a percentage of how many more enemies are coming. Fuck that. That's mm-hmm. that's TMI. <laughs> Way too much TMI. Also, you get ambushed. Fuck that too, because you're just walking along. And it's like, oh, surprise ambush! <laughs> now you, and then it goes into mm-hmm. as you see fight mode, which is no different than regular mode, other than hey, look, it's fight mode now. But we're gonna load this entire thing anyway. I just wanted to say that. Yeah, and uh, Jordan brought up Divinity uh, because, well, the comparison is obvious. You have you start off with two characters, and you do like the party-based combat, and, but that's about where it ends. Because the reason Divinity: Original Sin is a great game is the sheer amount of freedom or agency uh, that you're given as a player. Freedom, which you really start to crave when you're basically being led by the nose. They just shove their fingers down your nostrils like, here's the story, and you're going to follow it. No choice in the matter whatsoever. And that's Tower of Time's biggest sin. It's uh, it's one of those, again, Jordan brought up the show, don't tell thing. This is a tell, don't show. And I've mentioned time and time again, I don't like games that just tell me things instead of showing me things. Here you have uh, 2018, Pika Technology, you have engines like Unity, you have engines like Unreal. You can literally create the world you want people to learn the story of, and you're instead filling my screen with text boxes, because, yeah, I don't know. Well, it... um, there's also the fact that the main character is uh, just referred to as you, but when it comes time to actually letting you play the game, it just doesn't. 
I mean, you have an avatar in the game and you can't do shit about it. A, the camera issues and the character selection issues only really exacerbate just how restricted and how kind of weird it feels to, to play this game. And the linear story just doesn't really help it at all. I'll give it two chairs because I can see that a lot of work was put into this. A lot of things were done right. But a lot of things were just not done. Did I did I freeze? You y'all no. can hear me, right? No, no, no. This game is so bad it killed Jordan. Not really. Uh, yeah, you, <laughs> just a video. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I, I had a bit of the uh, network hiccup. Anyways, that's one chair for fun. Two chairs for the entire game. I'm getting feedback. Ah, uh, final thoughts. Um, how about some feedback? Because I, I can keep talking for like another 30 minutes if, if this is really bugging you. Well, that's only me. No. Oh. Anyway, that's going to do it for this. That was, uh, what was the name of the game again? Tower of Time. Tower of Time. Okay, put it in your face if you want. Maybe. Give it a shot. If you're into it, D&D, uh, kind of. Who knows? No. Don't do it. Uh, yeah. That, Take- that's all I got to say. Okay. We wrapped up the show, so a little bit shorter than uh, we've been having usually. But hey, that's a good thing. And if you'd like, you know, more, uh, more shorter shows. No, that doesn't work. If you'd like more shows shorter, to be shorter, sh- <laughs> yeah. Pedro, <laughs> I don't like our listen, shows. <laughs> listen, I I quit listening at right at the review section, like halfway through the news. <laughs> I, I, I tuned out. Yeah, he's been on pure autopilot this well, entire time. Right. I mean, I'm like an insect with its heads head, heads cut off. Yes, the rare two headed insects. It, it, it's it, it's like hail insect hydra. You cut off one head and two more take its they're, place. They're, they're easy to spot because they're purple. Yeah, and also giving. Well, you know uh, what? Ed- if you eject button. Too. Pedro, tell us how to get in contact. If, if you two cut out at some point during the show and you'd like to tell us why. You can do that. Go to LukeScapeCast.com, hit the contact button, fill out the form. It's pretty easy. There's a teeny tiny little caption. Don't the let the reverse Just mortgage advertisement distract you. No, <laughs> fill out the form. <laughs> no, don't take well, advantage of those subprime rates. <laughs> while you're there, also click on the support button. There's uh, really nice ways that support us far more directly than uh, reverse mortgages. You know, those. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't know, man. That, that, that whole fucking pyramid scheme's been hella profitable for us. I mean, what? Hmm? Shut <laughs> So, right. this week we have Eric. Eric comes up first and he says, F- FMV done right is very is very pleasing experience. Cool, that man. is my opinion. And is my favorite FMV is Tex Murphy series. However, there is a lot of bad FMV games out there. Okay, so yeah, there are. Uh, what we were on about off. last week, uh, <laughs> if you didn't tune into that, was the fan made. They're redoing it. It's like thirteen dollars or whatever. It's a spiritual yeah. mm-hmm. successor to the seventh guest, and to which I retorted, mm-hmm. "For the love of fucks and oils, like we had the hipster pixel retro shit." Mm-hmm. Renaissance. Let's not do that with F and V. Pretty, pretty peas. <laughs> pretty purple peas. I, 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 don't, I don't know. There, there are a lot of people who really like those F and V games. Mm-hmm. And you know what? They're, they're, Steam is so bloated right now. There is space for those fans. Oh, if you want F and V, if you want F and V games, by all means, buy and make F and V games. That's fine. Like the guy said, it's his opinion. But opinions are all wrong unless they're mine. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. F- FMV games suck unless they have Christopher Walken in it. If oh, they have Christopher Walken, no, in it, no. Then, the best yeah. one I heard was uh, opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one, and nothing gives you the right to rub it all over my face. Opinions are like assholes. You are one. Now shut up. <laughs> I'm an opinion. It hungers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next next email. This guy's talking about. This is from Paul. He's talking about wine. He says, "Once uh, Dark Souls three and what's SOTFS 
shadow of the fucking shit. Yeah, we're cool under wine. <laughs> I will scholar of the first sin. Shadow of the fucking yeah. shit. All right. Shadow of the shadow of the fucking shit. Uh, I can forever ditch windows. I can't wait. But it seems like it will still be quite a while away. Now, okay, we we, we talk shit about this because we hear it a lot. Oh, if Game X comes to Linux, I can ditch Windows. Blah 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 blah. I think we've given up on this argument. There's there's no way that holds true. The best we can hope for is that. Like we were talking about before, you got a good enough out of the box experience line with DirectX 11 VK or whatever that you can just play your games, your Windows games on Linux, mm-hmm. and then that 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 mm-hmm. is the only way this will ever happen. I'm sorry, like you you may believe this with every iota of your being, <laughs> but unless you are willing to straight up just ditch Windows and install Linux right now and keep using it, it's not going to happen. Um, hi, I'm Context Man. This uh, came about <laughs> because uh, Pedro was playing, uh, what is it, stupid, whatever shit, fucking shit. And Dark Souls yeah. 2, uh, yeah. Scholar of the First Sin. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, sh- sh- Shadow, Shadow of, of the, the fucking, fucking shit. <laughs> 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 okay, so he, he's playing that, playing it in one, like the filthy wine user he is. Uh, he played it on his uh, show Tuesday. And that was the thing. So somebody's like, hey, man, have you tried it with the Vulcan and all that? And they left this comment, which I had to yoink, because Paul did say, and I'm not picking on you, Paul. I'm not picking on you, but I think this is our 2018, uh, just, yeah, like Jordan said, we got to get this out of the way. (laughs) Never say if game or thing X shows up on Linux, because sometimes you eat it hard right out of the box. (laughs) <laughs> like gate man like he did because Pedro was like yeah man with, with the Vulcan thing it, it already works then uh, yeah it's like uh, yeah the game I'm playing that's Scholar of the First Sin it already works just fine it, uh, Scholar uh, of I'm the sorry, fucking Pedro. shit yeah, shadow, of the, shadow of the fucking shit <laughs> shadow of the fucking shit dude yeah and uh, DXVK plays Dark Souls 3 already so mm-hmm. what they're just like well wait, listen uh, <laughs> p- poof smoke bomb <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I, again, the fact remains is don't bother saying this. If you want to use Windows, go use Windows. Right. If you want to, if you want to support Linux, go support Linux. But don't give freaking lip service platitudes but, and say if, but, thing, if Thing X comes. Because you're, you're not. Until Microsoft like pushes out a Windows 10 update mm-hmm. where like your computer will grow a boot and like just cunt punch you or like just kick you in the balls. <laughs> like you will you will stay with windows until your dying breath. Like that, that's, it's not going to happen. So let's, let's focus on making it so that you can just play your games. And I do want to throw in, uh, again, Paul, I'm not picking on you. I'm just saying this. It doesn't yeah. earn you any street cred with the types of people <laughs> that just run Linux and happen to play games too. It's like, well, you know, Hey man, I, 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 I be just like you, but I got this thing that's holding me back. But you see, I want Gate, if a game is holding you back, man, in 2018, just that's not a commitment. If you roll roll it back to like 95, then you really got to make some hard sacrifices these days. Mm. And and there's always going to be that one game that comes out that you really want to play and it isn't out on Linux right. and it's just going to serve to prolong that excuse. So but Jordan, Jordan has a good point. I mean, it's cool. We can be friends. Be like, hey, man, I like Linux. Linux is cool. I use Linux. I also use Windows. But just, just say that. That's so much easier. Yeah. Just, just be like, yo, man, I like them both. I got friends that play console games. That's all they want to do. Console chill. Talk with their friends. We don't have any beef. What you got beef with is somebody's like, man, my console's like 11 DK at 300 <laughs> frames per second. And like, no, it's not. Shut up. You're delusional. Fuck off. Oh. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you know, on that bombshell, I think it's time for us to fuck off and cue the music because yes. you can always find us around 930 Eastern time. Uh, punch it into Google. You know what, fam? Like that smash button and something <laughs> subscribe. I don't know how that works. We're not really good at YouTube, <laughs> but hey. YouTube stores our videos for free, so we got to put them up there if you want to watch this nonsense or whatever most of you listen anyway. Um, subscribe to that. You'll get notifications if you want to come join the madness live. I'm Vin Stone on Twitter. Uh, type Vin Stone into Google. you find me on Google Plus and all the other places on the internet. You'll also find me if you Google Vin Stone just yes, playing you at will. you. <laughs> uh, I'm, 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 I'm Jordan F- Swung. You can find me underneath the shadow of the fucking shit, raising all sorts of shit. Uh, the Burning Fool on Twitter plus Jordan Swung on Google Plus. 
And I am Pedro Mateos, and there's no way in hell I'm even going to attempt to top that. You can find me at unaccounted for on Twitter or plus Pedro Mateos on Google+. I forgot what Twitter was for a moment there. I wish I could forget what Twitter was. Hey, man. Uh, we're, we're not, yeah, this shadow of the fucking shit. <laughs> yeah, it's just shadow of the fucking shit. All right, let's roll some credits and thank all the beautiful people making this possible. Let's do it in three, <laughs> two, boom. Oh, no, shit, guys. look at that, psychic. <laughs> uh, beautiful party patrons. I'd uh, like to thank everyone making this show possible. Everyone shopping through those, the, you do just all the plugs we do. And Trugs, you know I love you, baby. Thank you. You got me arts and crafts. Maybe, maybe I'll send you a picture of me in my short shorts doing some wallpapering. Mm-hmm. And putting putting the uh, uh, Pedro knows my plan for the swag shelf, the corner shelf is mm-hmm. the like just fill it with a gang of Nvidia shit until somebody calls us an Nvidia shit uh, shill, <laughs> and like swap it out with all AMD shit the next week. No, like do, do, do you rise in like, all the FX boxes? Right, I have a gang. I have every like the Nvidia cards. I got like. Five or six boxes and dude, all the you got any old, uh, Oh, dude, you know, you should put up that fucking NT box for deck alpha on there. It wouldn't fit, dude. That thing oh. genuinely weighs <laughs> almost as much as my sun monitor. You should put your sun monitor on there. <laughs> the wall would fall off. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you, you, should put your, you should put your wall on there. <laughs> Dynafire people. It's all- with it. It's a, it's a load-bearing shelf, goddammit. It's a load <laughs> It's structural. Five dudes. <laughs>